Okay. So uh, we have earlier in our previous lectures studied the vector addition and the triangle law of vector addition. In today's lecture, we will try to study parallelogram law of vector addition. So I'll just write title as parallelogram law of vector addition. Please do not make any kind of noise. The reason behind that is uh, these mobile phone cameras they are quite sensitive and they will catch all kinds of noises. In fact, even I feel that I should put off the fans. Correct, the fans are also for a mobile fans, mobile ke, that's a camera, that's a audio better thing. So that's the reason why I have uh, used this mic as well so that this will be more prominent sound than the others. Now let's come to this. earlier what we have done is how to add vectors in the form of i j k that supposing if i have any vector which is given in the form of let me say vector a is equal to it is 3 i cap plus 4 j cap and the other vector b is equal to it is minus 2 i cap minus 3 j cap And if I want to add these two vectors, it's going to be very easy for me. I just have to add i and i components. I just have to add j and j components so that the resultant or the addition of vector a plus vector b will give me 3i minus 2j plus of 4i minus 3j. So their addition is in fact going to be equal to only 1i plus 1j. So that will be your vector addition vector a plus vector b is equal to all this. Whereas this particular law, parallelogram law of vector addition, tells you how to add vectors whenever you just know the magnitude of two vectors and what is angle theta between them. There are certain situations of adding two vectors. Say if I have a force acting. one of the forces acting at this particular point is in the right hand side whereas its magnitude let us say it is equal to something like 10 units and there is another force of let us say 5 units acting along y axis if it's acting here this is 5 newton force now the angle between these two vectors is equal to 90 how to add these two vectors we have studied a formula for this as well or other we have seen in our simulations of earlier videos that the vector addition of these two you can just lift this vector take it somewhere here and the triangle law of addition tells you that this is going to be your resultant and it can be obtained by using pythagoras kind of a logic and that resultant will have magnitude equal to Uh, I would say it is uh, root of ten squared plus ten squared. So if at all you have such a kind of thing, you can add these two vectors. Hello. You can add these two vectors in this particular fashion. But what if this particular angle is not equal to theta is not equal to 90 degree and if you have angle of 30 degree or angle of 60 degree or 45 degree or any 37 57 greater than 90 degree angle how can i add vectors if at all only the two magnitudes of vectors are known and angle between them is known to us so that particular thing can be done by using parallelogram law of vector addition first of all what we will do is we will start The writing what is the statement of parallelogram law of vector addition we also start writing this statement to write that if two vectors of same type if two vectors of same type are represented in magnitude and direction If two 
two vectors of same type are represented in magnitude and direction by the two adjacent sides of a parallelogram by the two adjacent sides of a parallelogram then the resultant is then the resultant is represented in magnitude and direction then the resultant is represented in magnitude and direction by the diagonal of parallelogram by the diagonal of parallelogram starting from the same point starting from the same point Have you have written that now listen to what i'm showing you here here i have got two vectors one is vector oa whose magnitude is something i would call it as p p is its value it can be its length as earlier i have considered something like 5 units 10 units either so this particular thing has got magnitude equal to p and there is another vector ob it is having magnitude equal to q such that these two vectors are inclined with each other by an angle theta the angle between these two vectors is equal to something like angle theta is there i want to add these two vectors what does the law state law has very clearly stated that you have to complete the parallelogram the two sides of which are p and q so i have completed a parallelogram i would name it as o a c b is the name of the parallelogram that i take and the law is saying that the addition of these two vectors in magnitude as well as direction is given by the diagonal of the parallelogram starting from the same common point at which both the two vectors were acting so here this is supposed to be your resultant vector r and the length of this will give me the magnitude of the resultant the task for me now is to find what is value of r and how much angle your vector r makes with respect to vector p so that is what my task is for doing this i just do some slight changes in this diagram some slight modifications i draw a perpendicular from this point c on the extended part of oa i just draw a perpendicular from here on the extended part here in this and let us say the foot of the perpendicular is lying at some point called as m here so if m is this particular point what i find is that in case of parallelogram the opposite sides are parallel as well as equal so if this is of length or magnitude equal to p even this has got magnitude equal to p and if this is having magnitude equal to q even this particular thing ac also has magnitude equal to q and if these two are parallel lines and oa is a transversal then this is angle theta then this has to be equal to your angle theta i think i'm very clear about this what is my task my task is to find what is value of r or find out whether it r is equal to how much what is known to me known to me is that magnitude of vector oa is equal to p and magnitude of vector ob is equal to q and measure angle between these two that measure angle b o a is equal to theta this is known to me now i will start with the geometry of this since i want to find what is magnitude of this oc i have actually made this as a right angle triangle and i'll start using pythagoras theorem here 
So according to Pythagoras theorem, what will this give me? OC squared is equal to, what do I get? In triangle, what is that triangle? OMC in this triangle. OMC in this particular triangle you have. OC squared is equal to, it is entire this OM squared plus CM squared. Am I right? Yes. But what is this OM equal to? OM is made up of two parts. First one is this OA and the other is M. So I will write it accordingly. That therefore you get OC squared which I want to find that OC is equal to R. That OC squared is equal to it is OA plus AM. The whole bracket square plus you get it as CM squared. Now this term looks to be like a plus b bracket squared which I can simplify by using that formula and therefore I find that OC square is equal to OA plus AM so square that will give me OA square plus twice of OA multiplied by AM plus AM square you have plus of CM squared is already existing here correct? Now you see with these two terms, what is AM squared plus CM squared in this smaller right angle triangle that is once again like a Pythagoras triplet that AM squared plus CM squared is supposed to be equal to AC squared. I can write that. So in this place I can write AC squared and therefore you will find that OC squared is equal to it is OA squared plus 2OA into AM plus it is AC squared. Well, I'll keep this right now with me here. What is OC equal to? R, R which I have to find. So this is already kept on the left hand side. Jai wala find out the right side, I have kept it on my left hand side. What is right hand side? What are the right hand side terms? Let us see. OA. OA is B. It's known to me. Here also it is OA, it's known to me AM. AM is not known. Okay. And this AC that's equal to Q that is also known to me. So what is not unknown, what is not known here or what is unknown? It is this AM. Okay. That AM is a side of this smaller triangle. What I just do is I'll in this particular case, I'll first of all go for finding in this smaller triangle, in triangle. C M A. If you find what is sin theta equal to, what is sin theta equal to in this case? Sin theta is usually opposite upon hypotenuse. So what does that give me? C M upon A C. Good. C M upon A C it gives me. And cos theta is equal to what do you get? It is AM upon AC. But how much is AC equal to? AC is Q. So what is CM equal to? So CM is therefore equal to it is Q sine of theta and what is this AM equal to? AM is equal to it is Q cos of theta. What did I want to find? I wanted to find AM. We can kill my AM for cut line is CM for Both things I have calculated. That will be useful to me somewhere or the other. So I will put this particular value of AM here in this equation and therefore I get, come on, what is that? OC square, what is that? That therefore I will find that, therefore R squared is equal to, what do I get? P square plus now instead of writing this first, I will write AC squared first. What is AC? Q. So it is AC squared plus Q squared plus 2 OA. See the diagram 2 OA is 2 P multiplied by AM to cos theta. So what is R equal to then? R is equal to square root of all this entire term. 
So therefore, I find that R is equal to square root of p square plus q square plus two p q into cos of theta. Got it? Cos theta. So that's equation number two that I get. Okay. So what we have studied till now. was the proof of mathematical expression for how much is going to be the magnitude of the resultant of two vectors p and q which are inclined at some angle theta and that's called the proof of parallelogram law of vector addition we have found that the equation in that particular case for the resultant is given by this particular thing that r is equal to root of p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos of theta this is an extremely important equation because whenever you want to find the equivalent of the forces or if i say uh, usually in case of laws of motion and motion in two dimensional plane whenever we talk about some different kinds of examples at that time it is extremely helpful this kind of law sometimes what happens is that you are considering the river to be flowing in this particular direction and a man is trying to swim in this direction so river is already having velocity along this x axis and the man is trying to swim along this y axis so in that case the man will not really be able to travel in the same straight line so what would be the resultant velocity of that man that has to be calculated by vx of the flow of water that squared plus vy squared under root that will give me that vy will be the speed of the man with which he is trying to travel so that would give me what is the velocity of the resultant or the resultant velocity of that particular swimmer and instead of that man trying to reach exactly in the opposite end that person would try to uh, you see it will be reaching somewhere at the other end whereas if the man wants to exactly reach this particular position that fellow has to you see start traveling or start moving somewhere by making this kind of angle so that this component of velocity gets cancelled with the water's velocity and then only the person can just keep on traveling straight anyway those kinds of problems we will also see if at all time permits that we uh, are ready to speak about those problems or if someone else is teaching those examples i do not uh, know uh, now we are going to the special cases of this parallelogram law of vector addition what do i mean by parallelogram law and its special cases rather the law is already proved whether this particular equation which we have derived is giving us correct result because it's a general case so we try to find whether the special cases are right what do i understand by special cases the special cases are so very easy that they are known to us that if at all your vector p and vector q both were acting in the same line if this was acting in the same line here so if p is acting maybe 10 units along x axis even other vector q is also acting maybe 5 units along the same axis the resultant is supposed to be equal to addition 10 plus 5 is 15 if at all p is acting towards the right side of you all and q is acting towards the left hand side exactly 180 degree opposite the addition is in fact equal to subtraction and the first case which we have taken today right at the beginning of this lecture that if 10 is acting here and 5 is acting here the result is equal to root of 10 squared plus 5 squared so these special cases were known to me i try to see if this equation gives me those special cases to be right so i would say that if p and q both were acting in the same line if q is overlapping p how much would your angle theta become zero it can become so my special case one is that if at all theta is equal to zero that is vector p and vector q are supposed to be in the same line then what will be your addition equal to the resultant r is supposed to be actually equal to only p plus q i try to see so if theta is equal to 0 cos of 0 is 1 so you have cos theta is equal to cos 0 is equal to 1 you have 
and therefore I get this equation number 2 is going to become root of p squared plus q squared plus 2 p q cos theta is 1 I will not write that but what does this look like it is looking like a squared plus 2 a b plus b squared or p squared plus 2 p q plus q squared what is that p plus q the whole bracket squared so this is in fact equal to square root of p plus q the whole bracket squared means only equal to p plus q well so this is what we expected to have second case if P is acting here and Q is exactly acting in the opposite direction. How much is your angle theta? 180. <coughs> so if at all you have in special case 2, if your angle theta is equal to 180 degree, you have cos of 180 degree is equal to minus 1. So if cos 180 degree is equal to minus 1, this particular equation, equation number 2 here, it is going to become root of p squared plus q squared plus 2pq multiplied by minus 1 is minus 2p. So now this term is seen to be like p minus q the whole bracket squared or q minus p the whole bracket squared. Anything, whichever is greater minus the smaller the complete bracket squared. In fact, a minus b squared and b minus a squared are equal. But I will write, I will try to write whichever is greater minus the smaller because I want to ultimately find its square root. So therefore, I will say that r in this particular case is either equal to p minus q or q minus p magnitude madhe lita na greater minus smaller. When you talk about directions along with their vectors, it will automatically take care of itself. That you don't have to worry about. So that this was my special case too. This is also as expected getting proved. The third special case is that case number 3 which I have here is that if angle theta is equal to 90 degree that cos of 90 degree is equal to 0 and therefore I get this equation number 2 is going to become this cos 90 is 0 it means this entire will become 0. You just will have this r is equal to root of p squared plus q squared that's all and that is what we expected to have earlier as well so i get r is equal to root of p squared plus q squared so these two are the special cases these three are the special cases in this particular case okay so what we have studied till now in this parallelogram law was the proof of this equation r is equal to root of p squared plus q squared plus 2 p q cos of theta. We have also studied its special cases and now we almost come to an end of this and that is about finding the direction of this resultant vector r. The obvious thing here is, the simple thing to understand rather I can say is that if at all I have these two vectors in this particular fashion that vector p is here and vector q is here. In my diagram itself it is seen that p looks little bigger as compared to p. If it is so, in that case your resultant r will be more inclined towards this. Whereas if my p was this much and q is quite big, in that case your resultant will also rise up and it will have more inclination towards q. So where is exactly that resultant going to act what is the angle made by the resultant vector with respect to horizontal because I am considering P to be horizontal. There has to be some reference line. So let us say that this resultant vector of mine is making some angle alpha with the horizontal vector P. Then the slope usually gives me direction. And earlier in your earlier standards you all must have studied that slope of a straight line is given by y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. Have you studied this? Yeah. Good. So that delta y by delta x or that y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 in fact gives you, if you see that y2 minus y1 is the difference along y axis and x2 minus x1 is the difference along x axis, it actually gives me tan of alpha. 
so the slope is really given by tan of alpha so hence for you just keep in mind that every time i have to find what is the direction of the vector you just have to find the tan of angle made by vector with respect to your reference line so how to get the direction of vector r i have already said that let us say alpha be the angle made by the resultant vector r with your vector p and therefore i get that tan of alpha is equal to tan alpha is opposite upon adjacent what is opposite for this alpha cn adjacent is om so tan alpha is equal to cm divided by om but once again how much is om equal to om plus a so put it like that that therefore i get tan of alpha is equal to it is cm divided by oa plus am but this is exactly why i needed those things earlier cm and am that's why i calculated those earlier i have determined them earlier so what is cm equal to cm is q sin theta am is q cos theta cm a and oa what about oa oa is equal to b put all those values and therefore i get that therefore tan of alpha is equal to come on now, what do i get it as cm that is q sin theta divided by p plus q cos of theta and therefore how much is the angle made if i want to find i can write alpha is equal to tan inverse of all this vector it is q sin theta divided by p plus q cos theta that is how i can write this correct so that is how we are going to have this particular thing maybe i have called it as some equation number 2 or 3 whichever we have done so that was the proof for the direction of this resultant vector r that tan alpha is equal to all this you can even discuss the special cases of this but that is not needed for time being as and when time progresses we will keep learning many more things about this so that is what my intention was to teach today that parallelogram law of vector addition and it is entirely taught to all people in next lecture of tomorrow